think the ISC example was a great example of a system designer like Dr. Clegg and his team embracing the challenges, rough seas, moving parts, and they used graphical system design to create a much safer and more dynamic control system. Now sometimes not only are the unforeseen challenges there, but the unexpected does occur. And when the unexpected occurs, of course we want to react very quickly. And NI tools are, have always been known for more productive, rapid development. But we typically explain the benefits of that system in terms of total system cost. But in our next example, the benefit isn't explained in terms of dollars. The time savings was the most critical. And when we look at what really worked in this, it was, a, it was again, not, in, not measured in terms of dollars, but measured in terms of human safety and peace of mind in a disaster. Such a disaster struck more than a year ago when the great tsunami hit the eastern coast of Japan on March 11, 2011. The 311 disaster rocked the world and created a very uncertain environment for the residents of Japan. But to share with all of us today how engineers see even a disaster like this through a different lens, I'm extremely honored to introduce to you Dr. Tanigaki of Kyoto University and my good friends from National Instruments Japan, Ryota and Mandeep. Dr. Tanigaki. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Maido Shelley. Good morning, Shelley. And good morning, everyone. When the earthquake hit at 2.46 that Friday afternoon, our employees had to be evacuated out of our Tokyo office and had to walk uh, home through the night with thousands and thousands of other Tokyoites because the trains and buses had completely stopped. And when they got home, when we got home, we were greeted with even more bad news with the nuclear situation unfolding just 240 kilometers away in Fukushima. And that's the same distance as from here to uh, Houston. But we were all safe, and we quickly got back on our feet, and we got our systems online. We helped our affected customers get their measurements uh, up and running again. And then we turned to the many people who were still uh, left struggling in the wake of the disaster. The NI team looked for small things to do. We organized donations. We went up north. We drove up north for uh, cookouts and volunteering missions, and uh, we even went to the evacuation shelters to help children get trained on Lego Mindstorms, which brought a much-needed smile on the kids' faces. Well, on the technical side, uh, engineers at NI Japan built simple radiation monitoring systems. Personally traveled up to the Fukushima area to take some radiation measurements, uh, which was a major concern in that area. As a tools provider, we were looking for ways to enable other scientists and engineers to do the same to apply their domain expertise and make a difference. From that thought, we created the NI Recovery Grant Program, a way to fund and support the domain experts who are trying to do something extraordinary for Japan's recovery efforts. And this is how we found Dr. Tanigaki from Kyoto University. Similar to the team at NI Japan, my team at Kyoto University also wanted to use our expertise as nuclear scientists to prevent further harm in the aftermath of the earthquake and nuclear disaster. We are intimately familiar with the uh, nuclear reactor and radioactivity. We thought about ways we could apply our domain knowledge and understanding in nuclear science to, uh, to help with the situation. Right, so Dr. Tanagaki, you and your colleagues had all of the expertise in the radiation monitoring and the measurements there, but what did you actually build with all of this domain expertise? We wanted to uh, evaluate how people are affected by the radiation from the uh, radioactive materials released to the environment. The difficulty in evaluating the effect on human body is that the effect is not only determined by counting the number of gamma rays absorbed, but also by the energy of gamma rays from various radioisotopes. We also needed to know where such source of radiation, radioactive materials, were spread out around the inhabited areas as soon as possible. So the system sounds really complex. You have to measure all of these different radiation levels. You also have to correlate it with the location, include all of these specialized sensors. But it doesn't sound like that was the hardest problem or part of this application. It seems like it, you had to get it done quickly because of the situation. Mm -hmm. We knew how to get our measurement, but you are correct. Time is of the essence. Uh, we use NI LiveView to build our first system in just one week. We call it NI, uh, sorry, uh, Kyoto University Radiation Mapping System, or Kramer 1 for short. So the first prototype in just one week, that's very impressive. Actually, Shelley, uh, what's more impressive is what happens next. Uh, through the Japan Recovery Grant Program that Ryota just described, we decided to partner up with Kyoto University. 
take Dr. Taniyaki's Kurama prototype and turn it into something even bigger. Uh, we decided to build a completely autonomous system that can be loaded into public vehicles such as local buses and postal trucks so that it can continuously monitor not only the, the number of gamma rays but also the energy levels. The data being tagged with GPS information sent over wirelessly through the cellular network up into the cloud can now be shared near real time to the public. With the help from NRI as partners, Matsuda Denkosha and SCA, we ported the algorithm of Kramoran system into NRI Compact Rio. The system was built in less than two months, completely automated measurement, and is worked enough to operate continuously in public vehicles. The improvement allowed many more uh, vehicles to join in the measurement. Now we have 100 Kram2 systems deployed in the eastern area of Japan. And thank you. Thank you. And as you can see, uh, we are sharing, we were able to share with the uh, Japanese residents about the uh, information uh, radi radiation measurements we've collected near the Fukushima di disaster. Such a powerful piece of the application, sharing this with the residents. Now, of course, our team here was so excited about this particular application, we asked the NIJ team to mail us a Kurama 2 system to Austin. And just to speak a little bit to the testament of the scalability of the software architecture that the team built, once it arrived, all we had to do was swap out the 3G module so the system would work here in Austin. And I've been driving it around now since then. Right. Well, Shelly, I guess uh, you've done a pretty good job uh, measuring all the radiation levels in the downtown area here and all the bars, it seems like. Well, <laughs> I wanted to make sure it was safe for all of our visitors in Austin, Mandeep. All right, well, for the rest of you in the audience that are attending the conference party tonight, uh, rest assured that uh, the radiation levels here in Austin are well below our detection threshold. NI graphical system desi uh, design provided my team a platform to share our domain knowledge and quickly prototype and deploy the system. When we, Kyoto University and NI, thought differently as scientists and engineers, uh, we were able to get react quickly and do something big. Japan is still in the recovery stages, but today, the NI and partners team that built the Kurama system, along with Japanese customers and partners exhibiting in the Japan Pavilion at the expo floor, are seated in the front row. Uh, and together, we'd like to thank. <laughs> And together, we'd like to thank the network of NI friends uh, who have continued to support us through this recovery effort. Thank you.